Hello, welcome back to the Intel with Greg Cosell. We're in season two, episode two. I'm Jeff Mosher alongside Adam Kaplan from Inside the Birds. And of course, we've got Greg Cosell here. And we started our series last week. Uh, we previewed free agent, what? What do we do? Free agent cornerbacks, right? Or defensive DBs. backs, I should say. Yeah, DBs. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to continue this conversation previewing NFL free agents. But today we're going to talk about edge rusher so let's just set the table here greg um we know the eagles are fond of stockpiling edge rushers they theoretically have two pretty good ones in hassan reddick and josh sweat now we know that josh sweat did not have a very good last two months of the season and we know that hassan Reck, reddick's contract situation complicates the discussion here we'll see what happens with that uh as far as backup edge you know brandon graham we'll see if he comes back he's obviously into his mid-30s and then Nolan Smith, a guy they drafted in the first round last year, uh, who we are, I, I would say we're still waiting to see what Vic Fangio, the new defensive coordinator, wants to do with him, but he's going to be an edge rusher. They're going to use edge speed. Uh, he'll be entering year two. So kind of an interesting mix. You got veterans, you got young kids, you got a guy with a contract dispute. But with the Eagles, Greg, as you know, you always got to look at free agents because the, uh, the Eagles are always looking for for edge depth or potentially even a starter. Yeah, you know, and I, I tend to agree with what you said, Jeff, about Nolan Smith. Obviously, I think he was drafted to be an edge player, and that's essentially in, in I would say, 95% of the snaps he played a year ago, he was on the edge. There were a few where he played stacked. You know, I, I guess we need to see how that plays out, because if they had a lineup today, who would be their stacked backers? No, well, that's a great, that, that's another episode, no Greg. <laughs> I think the three yeah. of us would be in the running. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'd be running all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know, I mean, again, and, and, and I, I thought Smith, when he, just as a quick aside before we get to edge rushers, I thought Smith, when he came out of Georgia, and obviously he played predominantly on the edge, but he also did play stacked at Georgia. Um, and I know there were a couple of coaches who I spoke to who uh, agreed with me. I thought that it would make sense for him to transition to being a stack backer. Um, mm. But I don't think the Eagles drafted him to do that. Now, then much depends now on a new coordinator and what they have at, at the stack linebacker position. They, you know, we'll see how that plays out because as Adam has mentioned numerous times during the season, uh, and I would bet he's 100% right, I'm not sure that they can count on a Kobe Dean at this point. That's true. Correct. Yeah. yeah, true. Yeah, he's uh, come up from the Let's Franck injury, so that's that's a pretty serious injury, but he's expected to be ready by the spring. But So so let's get started here. And we had, uh, we had our friend Rick Spielman on, former Vikings GM, and he drafted Daniel Hunter who really the last two seasons, he yep. got healthy. He's been phenomenal. He's been healthy the last two seasons. He, somehow he just turns 30 this later this year for being yeah. a league 10 years. So Greg, this guy, he's played in a 43, 34. I, to me, I, I would think he could fit in most systems, if not okay. all of them. Uh, what, what does this tape look like to you? Daniil Hunter is, he is a fascinating guy because people may remember when he came out of LSU, he had seven and a half sacks in his entire LSU career. And that's wow. why he was drafted where he was, despite the fact that he was long, athletic, you know, seemingly had all the traits. But as you guys both know, there's a lot of people that look at production. And so when they saw the production, they said, oh, you know, if this guy doesn't really produce in college in terms of, of sacks, is he going to produce in the NFL? He clearly has. And he's everything you want. He is long. He's athletic. Um, he can bend. Uh, in some ways, he's multi-positional because the way he's been used, particularly under floor, is that they moved him around where he played inside as well. So he's he's also a, a you know diverse kind of player in terms of how he can be deployed. Uh, Daniel Hunter is a really really good player. He's he's probably one of my favorite edge players in the league to watch. Yeah, it's funny. He's you know he feels like he's been around forever, and he's yeah. he, he's not thirty yet. He will be thirty by next season, which sort of puts him in the same boat as the Eagles are with Hassan Reddick. So when you're looking There's at no drop off, length, but no drop off in his game though, at this, at this moment in time, you know, right. you never know when that happens, but based on his 2023 tape, there's not been a drop off in his game. Well, that, that brings up a good question that I, I meant to, I should have started with you with Hassan Reddick, Greg, did you feel like you saw a drop off in edge speed in his game? I, I thought we saw that from Josh sweat, but 
I don't, I don't know how you felt Hassan Reddick's skills looked like on tape in the last month, month and a half. Um, I, I didn't feel that way about Reddick. I thought he looked pretty much the same. You know, don't forget sacks can come in bunches. A guy can go, you know, there's many reasons why guys get sacks and don't get sacks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it depends on the opponent, depends on any number of factors. There could be five different factors. Reddick, I did not feel looked different. Sweat absolutely did. Mm -hmm. uh, Reddick, I, I did not feel uh, looked different. Right. So you have two guys then with Reddick and Daniel Hunter who are going to be 30, but still have a lot of, it seemingly have some gas yes. left in the tank. Yes. What, di what differentiates these two? Would you say Hunter does something differently than, than Reddick? Well, Hunter's built differently. He's longer. Right. Um, you know, he's, he, he's very quick Hunter for his length. Um, but he's, he's, I mean, I think ultimately you're probably dealing with Reddick being just a touch quicker because he's built lower to the ground and pro and can bend a little more. Hunter is not in, inflexible, but he's not going to bend the same way Reddick does, but he's a longer athlete. And that's a trait. You know, it, it's like when you talk about size with a wide receiver, stride length is a trait length for a pass rusher is a trait so you know they're, they're different players um you know it depends what you like you know but but hunter's a really really good player so greg washington has an incredible amount of cap space and they're they're in the edge rusher market they don't have any left remember they traded both of them yeah in dan in dan quinn's system how would daniel hunter or, so, or, or somebody like that with that with that kind of length fit in oh i think hunter fits anywhere i mean and okay. and, and adam you know pass rushers on the edge and now guys get moved around. That's a premium position. You need to be able to rush the quarterback. Um, and the other factor too, which I think has become increasingly important in today's NFL, where there's so much more quick game, RPOs are quick game, the length to be able to reach and knock down passes becomes even more important than it was years ago. And I think Hunter, because of his length and arm length, you know, he gives you that more so let's say than a Redick. But I think that you're mentioning Washington with Quinn. Um, I think Hunter fits anywhere. Got it. All right. And just for our listeners and viewers perspective, Greg, you know, there the obviously are some bigger names here, like the Josh Allen, the Brian Burns is, but we didn't want to, you know, go through guys that we think are either going to get tagged or set huge market deals. We wanted to go through guys that, you know, 25 or 26 NFL teams, including the Eagles might be looking right. at because uh, they're not going to be resetting the market. So, uh, on that vein, in that vein, I want we wanted to ask you about the Jets. Uh, Bryce Huff, who really kind of came into his own here uh, with the New York Jets. What what do you think of Bryce Huff? Yeah, I, I started noticing him a number of years ago. Um, he's he's basically been used as a, a situational pass rusher. He almost always lines up on the left side of the defense. That's where he's best, which is the spot Reddick plays, obviously. Um, um, he's really good. I mean, he's one of those guys that you can't just look at the this, this sack stats. He he pressures quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't have numbers in front of me, but I guess for, for the for the websites that do those metrics about quarterback pressures, my guess is he'd be close to the top. Um, he's really, he's bendy. He's explosive. Um, he's really good as a looper in the stunt game. Now the Eagles are not a, they weren't obviously a new coaching staff. They weren't a heavy stunt team, but he's very good as a looper because of his burst and his flexibility and his closing speed to the quarterback. Um, he's, he's a really good situational pass rusher, really good and has been for at least two, three years. Yeah. I'm, I've wondered, and we have to ask uh, Ryan Silverfield, this, the Memphis head coach next time we have him on, why the heck was he not drafted Bryce Huff? You know, that, that I, you know, I didn't do him coming out of college. Yeah. So I, I don't know the answer to that. That's a great job though, by Joe Douglas, the Jets GM, because I mean, he not only made the team he's contributed yet. Yeah, now he's only started seven games in four years, but th the question is guys, and we know this, when you ask a sub package rusher to be an every down player, sometimes their impact can be minimized. That that's what teams have to look at here. Yes. Okay, yes. monster season, as you said, Greg, been a good player really from the very start. Now he's going to want starter money, and he's got to play starter snaps. How does that transfer now for a new role for him? So that that's – I look forward to seeing how this plays out in free agency with him. And and that's a great point, Adam, because maybe a team's not willing to give him, quote, unquote, starter money, whatever that is, because, mm -hmm. you know, they may feel that, you know what, this guy is phenomenal for 25 snaps a game, and that's what he is. And, right. and, and he's not anymore, you know, and which, by the way – that has tremendous value. And I, you know, you, you guys know the markets better than I do. Uh, but you know, I, I don't think anybody's going to look at him as a 50 snap a game player. Right. Yeah. Uh, to your point. Oh, go ahead, Adam. 
No, go ahead. I, I was going to say to Greg's point on stat, tw- 10 sacks, but also 21 quarterback hits was in the upper echelon of uh, yeah, that, that was probably in the top five or six, I would think. I mean, you may not have the entire, yeah, but I remember, yeah, yeah he, he gets to the quarterback. He, he, he squeezes the pocket and gets to the quarterback. Mm. Six three two fifty plus. We'll 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 keep an eye on him. Now this next guy is one of my favorite sleepers uh, for just a guy that not a lot of people know about. Unless you're a Texans fan, you probably don't know much about Jonathan Grenard, Greg. Ah. But I know you've seen him. What are your thoughts on him? I like Jonathan Grenard a lot. Um, it's funny. I watched the Texans defense a lot this year for obvious reasons. They were a good team, but I I wanted to make sure I saw Will Anderson and and Stingley and Grenard always flashed. Like for instance, Grenard's a better bender than Will Anderson because Will Anderson's not a bender. Um, Grenard can you know he almost always lined up as Huff lined up on the left side of the defensive line. Grenard almost always lined up on the right side of the defensive line. Um. And he showed up every single week. I think he missed a few games too and, and had a good number of sacks, even missing a few games. Um, so he's a little bendy. Um, he can play off contact well. Uh, Grenard's another guy I liked. He's he's a, a University of Florida kid, as I recall, right? Isn't that what Correct. he played? I believe yeah. so, yeah. Yep. I remember watching him coming out. Just, I thought he was a really solid player. And I think he's grown in the league and become a good pass rusher. See that, you know, it's very hard to know that when you evaluate, let's say college guys and try to think three, four years down the road, sometimes you can, you can make a great evaluation and go, Hey, three years, this guy's going to be really good. And other times you're, you're wrong. I mean, it's, but he's really improved. He's really improved. And I like Grenard um, again, because he had Jeff, did he, did he have something like 12 sacks this year? 12 and a half. Sacks. Yeah. And he had eight, two years ago in his second year. So he, he was showing some yeah. development by year two. Yeah. So, I mean, he's improved. And again, he's more of an every down player than Huff. Um, mm-hmm. He can play 50 snaps a game and still be an effective player. So again, it all depends on what they think of sweat. The Eagles we're talking about, obviously, uh, but Grenard is a right defensive end and he is a, he's a good player. Awesome. All right. Jonathan Grenard from the Texans. All right. We're going to have some fun with this one. We're going to go the familiarity route as far as someone who has played in the Vic Fangio defense uh, and may have emerged into a player that people didn't see coming. And that would be Andrew Van Ginkle (laughs) of the Miami Dolphins. The hair. Uh, Yes. Mr. Long flowing locks, Andrew Van Ginkle. Uh, so we know he's from, he came out of Wisconsin, correct? He was not a, as a pass rusher. He was an edge player. Right, right. As a pass rusher. How did his career develop with the Dolphins to what it is la- or what it was last well, year? Well, he became kind of a multi-positional player. He played on the edge. He played off the ball. He did multiple things. Um, I think in an ideal world, you know, pass rusher is what he's been. You know, if you go back to college, that's what he was. Um, you know, he's long, he's athletic. I think he's, He's probably about six three, I would guess. Six four, I don't two forty. Yeah, I was gonna say he's long. Um, and uh, you know, he's one of those really intriguing players because he's not necessarily going to be the guy. Like you don't sign Van Ginkle, he's not gonna get the money that you'd think of the the high end pass rushers are going to get, but he knows the system. Obviously, he can play multiple positions. Look, he might have to be a a stack backer if the Eagles were to sign him simply because they don't have those guys on the roster. Um, but um, he's just a, he's one of those really solid players that every defense kind of needs. And, and, you know, even though he might not get 12 sacks or he might not make, you know, 90 tackles, he's just one of those really solid players that shows up every single week. Um, again, I don't know what Vic Fangio thinks of him. You know, if he likes him a lot, that's the kind of guy he might feel he needs because he knows the defense. And it always helps when you have a player who can teach the other players the defense as opposed to the coaching staff. I would think it's one of those, when you talk to personnel people, he may not be for your scheme or this team, but he might be for another team. I'll be, he's kind of one of these guys you could probably talk to 30 teams and they could be split on him wh- where you line him up or how good he is. But man, the guy makes plays. He can rush the pass, as you said, he's this that season had a ton of tackles because he had to play some inside for Jerome Baker. So this, this one's interesting to see where he ends up, whether he's an yeah. Eagle or back to the Dolphins or somewhere else. I'll be interested. He's got to see where great he length, which again, that's a right. trait. That's a yeah. trait. Yeah. Wait, hey, real quick on that, Greg, because we're, you know, for the Eagles, we're not accustomed to seeing guys do this, but I'm wondering if around the league, you do see more, linebackers who sort of platoon between stack on first and second down, but then go, go to the edge on, on third down or pass rush down. Um, 
I'm trying to think, you know, obviously, uh, so people understand we don't prepare these questions. So, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a difference between point. saying being like Nicobe Dean at Georgia, who was a stack backer who just blitzed from a stack position. Right. But yeah, right. He, he would line up in A gaps and pressure. Um, right. I mean, you see it on occasion. I'm trying to think of other team, you know, other players that do that. And I'm sure there are. Um, right. I can't think of one right off hand. So it's not really, really common that you're seeing this around no, the league. No, you okay. don't see that as a normal, normal thing. Right. Well, it could be an interesting thing with Van Ginkle and maybe other players. If if you if that I don't want to say if it starts a trend, but obviously if someone can do both and do it at a high enough level, you would think a defensive coordinator would start to think, all right, well, I'm thin at certain areas like the Eagles right. are here. Maybe I can get away with a two for one deal well, here. Well, obviously, as Adam said, Jerome Baker got hurt last year and I think missed five or six or seven games, whatever the number was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had other injuries as well. So they needed Van Ginkle to kind of become a stack player, mm -hmm. which actually speaks, you know, to how smart he is and how savvy he is because there's a lot going on in Fangio's defense. Right. Yeah, you got to learn. Yeah, you get exactly the techniques are different. What yeah. your responsibilities are different. That yeah, it's a good point. So, next guy looked like two years ago in twenty two, but this guy might be the next young, really good pass rusher. And then Josh Uche did not have that type of season. Uh, followed up, he had eleven and a half sacks two years ago, just three this past season. But it's not always about sacks, Greg. What are your thoughts on Josh Uche? Yeah, two years ago, you know, when he had that really good season, it really looked like he was going to become. A really, I don't want to say dominant pass rusher. You know, we're not going to say he's T.J. Watt, but uh, yeah. it really looked like that he had what it took to be a good pass rusher. I remember doing him coming out of Michigan. I mean, he's got some explosion to him. He's got kind of a tight, compact body because he's not super tall, but he's you know he's compact. Um, you know, he's one of those guys. He won't command a ton of money. I don't believe I, you guys would probably agree with that. And you know. It, He's the kind of guy you could bring in as a compete guy. And if you can get him back playing the way that he did and, and the way that he's capable of, then you might have yourself a player, but you won't have to break the bank for him. You know, when you, when you look at veteran edge guys, Greg, they're, they're, it's almost malpractice to just throw a name at you and say, evaluate this guy, because this is where the market seems to be between guys who can give you part-time roles, but be effective, whether it's, Jadavian Clowney, who just had a really nice season with the Ravens, or a Marcus Davenport, Yannick Ngakwe, uh, Charles Harris, uh, Brandon Graham. I'm not sorry, Brandon, Derek Barnett, who the Eagles had. I mean, he, he like actually did good... very well in Houston. Yeah. Yeah. See, it, it's funny. It, you know, it's funny how that works. You know, I, I don't have a, probably none of us have a great answer for why that's the case, but obviously Derek Barnett was a, fairly high first round pick and and the Eagles didn't reach for him he was considered that when he came out so it wasn't as if you know they they made a big reach and you know Jadavion Clowney obviously was the number one pick in the draft has never been a great pass rusher and this year he looked better than ever you know who knows why um so when you hope that you you know a Josh Uche, for instance, if you were to sign him, you hope that, you know what, it's in his body. We've seen it. He can do it. So you hope when you sign him that maybe a different way of coaching him, maybe whatever, maybe the environment, who knows the reasons sure. why, but that's what you're hoping for. So on that vein, Greg, I think with Barnett, I'm pretty certain they run, they, they're one of the few teams that runs wide nine, uh, not all the time, but obviously in pass rush situations. Yeah. yeah, don't don't they? I think they yeah, use that. To, so he lined up wide most of the time. Yes. Yeah, and man, he he would now see he had he wanted out because with the Eagles because he was burying their depth chart. They weren't going to play him. He was kind of lost here. Yeah, and he goes to that system. He, it also got healthy. We shouldn't mention that. We know Barnett's been hurt a lot in his so career. He started to play when Grenard got hurt. That's why they signed yep. him. Yep, and he and, did great. And he snaps pretty snaps much snaps. came in and he played 35, 40 snaps a game, and he was a factor mm. for them. Wow. Greg, I know you paid. you watch a lot of Titans tape, right? I know you do some uh, the interviews down in Tennessee. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, it did not work out for Bud Dupree with the Titans. No. What what did you see when you were watching their defense? Bud Dupree's an interesting guy. Even though he's had a couple of years where the sacks looked pretty good, he's never been truly a pass rusher. And by the way, you can almost go back to college because he was at Kentucky, um, and he was at believe it or not, he was at Kentucky with Zadarius Smith, um, and Dupree was used even at Kentucky as kind of a multi-dimensional player, he was not a pure pass rusher. He played a lot in coverage. So he, even when he came in the league, despite the fact that he has body, beautiful, looks the part moves well, you know, at some might even say he's sudden and twitchy. He never had pure pass rush traits. Mm -hmm. So at this point in his career, 
I don't think you sign him as a pass rusher at all. Yeah, he was with Atlanta last season, and he's had an ACL. He's been hurt a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, drafted in the first round of 2015 by the Steelers. Wow, that was yeah. like a long, yeah, time, a long ago. time ago. Yeah, and they, yeah. they got some production out of him, but after that, it went downhill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he's, even, a, he's even, a backup. You know, who, again, we talked about someone like Huff, who has is always around the quarterback. Dupree's not that guy. You right. know, so he's just never really been the pass rusher that his body and his traits suggest he could be. Well, there's a guy who we're going to talk about right now is this is kind of one of those polarizing players because this guy was a super high first round pick. He's had a lot of injuries, but he's got a lot of talent. You never know what you're getting out of Chase Young. Greg, what are your thoughts on him? He did not look particularly good this year. Um, I know he had the sack in the Super Bowl and people probably remember that when he sure. beat the you know, beat Donovan Smith. But for the most part, for the most part with the Niners, he looked upright and stiff. Uh, he did not look very good at all. Um, I I can tell you from speaking with someone who was on the commander's staff um, and had been there the entire time, I believe that Bryce Young was there, I think. Um, not Bryce Young, Chase Young, excuse me, that uh, he said that this kid is is not one of those guys that loves a ball and that is highly motivated, you know. Um, so, again, I take that for what it's worth. This guy was around him every day. You know, we're, we're not. Um, but I can only tell you what the film said. And with the Niners, he looked upright and stiff and did not look very explosive. Mm. You uh, you had mentioned Bud Dupree's college teammate, Zadarius Smith, who's also a free agent. Um you know, had a couple of really good years uh, with the Packers back to back, and then one with Minnesota. Yeah, he was with Cleveland last year. Uh, how do you see him? Sort of situational at this point of his career. I think he's could be in but his thirties. You know, with Minnesota, he was used a lot like Daniel Hunter. I mean, he played on the edge. They he came inside a ton when they went to their sub defenses. They were they were basically a nickel sub. They didn't play a lot of dime. Uh, because of the way they use Josh Metellus. But he he went inside on third down all the time, stood up a lot, moved around, but he became an inside kind of, you know, movable chess piece joker, whatever you, term you want to use. Uh, that's the way he was used in Minnesota and has been used that way throughout much of his career. But, you know, his core position is obviously on the edge, but throughout much of his career, he's been moved inside on third down sub fronts. Yeah, I've always liked him, Adam. I mean, he's going to be... Oh, yeah. 30 what two years old or I, I think so yeah by September he'll be 32 I kind of wonder how the league will view him yeah the key, he, you know, he actually oh I'm sorry go ahead Adam I was just gonna say I remember hearing him talk about playing with he was playing the wide nine for the first time in his career and he said it was just a different technique so with with Jim Schwartz in, in Cleveland and now at, at uh he turns 32 in September the question will be for him is he a sub package rusher I know they moved him around he talked about that how they were moving him around what is he at this point of his career? We we forget, man. It's been so long. Another guy was dressed in 2015, mm -hmm. fourth round by the Ravens. Yeah, like if I could get this guy on a one year deal for not a whole, well, you know, a couple million, I'm thinking that's pretty good depth right there. Right. And, not, and moving him around might be better for him than a wide nine where you're stale on the edges. And by the way, that's you. You just raised a great point, Jeff, which I was going to say, and you just raised it, which is great. That with a lot of these guys, it's it's, it's what's the contract look like? I mean, you know, yeah. some of these guys are not getting three, four year deals at a lot of money. You know, right. Darius Smith is a nice player, and he's ha actually had a very good career. But you're not signing him for three years at a ton of money. Correct. Right. I mean, certainly, as we mentioned names here, we didn't even go through some. It's a it's a buyer's market. I mean, there are still guys like, you know, the Josh Allens, the Brian Burns, right? Leonard Williams. Well, those guys are going to get money. They're going to get right. money. Well, but then staying. they push, yeah. they push yeah. other people down, though. So there's not going to be right. 20 teams yeah. looking for 40 pass rushers. So right. like you made the right point. The Eagles are not going to go after Josh Allen or Brian Burns. Right. Because, yeah. Well, they're both going to stay anyway. They're not yeah. going to go anywhere. But yeah. But the point but is, is, is the Eagles wouldn't break the bank for those guys. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to a guy that you've talked a lot about, and you you just go by what the tape tells you. You've had some critical comments based strictly on tape, but I know you said Jadavian Clowney played pretty well last season. What are your thoughts on him? He's a free agent once again. I thought he played his best football far and away last year. I mean, I let the tape tell me. You know, yep. <laughs> people listen to me know it's not personal. You know, I thought he played great football last year. I thought his body looked leaner. I thought, and whether it was or not, I don't know. That's what it looked like. I um, yeah. thought he looked leaner. I thought he moved better. He showed a little bit of bend, which he really didn't show throughout much of his career. Let's keep in mind, guys, big time pass rushers with very few exceptions. Um, 
one other guy who's an exception is Ngakwe. But big-time pass rushers usually are not with five or six teams before the age of 30. So that tells you he was not seen in the league as a big-time pass rusher. That's not me making it up. If he was a really big-time pass rusher, he wouldn't have been with five or six teams before the age of 30. But I thought he was phenomenal last year. Um, now, yes, he was playing on a really good defense with a lot of other good players, but I thought just isolating him as an individual had an outstanding year. You have to believe, um, is he just about 30 now? Is that what he is? 31. Just turned 31. Okay, just turned 31. Um, you So you have to decide, it was last year an aberration. Was he truly better because maybe his body was different? You know, he could be one of those guys that a team could look to sign a two or three year deal if they believe that, you know, he's he's going to be that guy because he does have body beautiful. And, you know, he was a number one pick and he's clearly coming off his best season. Greg, one more for you. Um, again, this is a, this is a guy that Eagles had interest in a couple of years ago when he signed a deal. But he, he was he had some injuries. He was in Miami last year, wasn't was hurt, a little ineffective. And that's. Emmanuel Agba. I knew you were going to then. Yeah. I, oh, because look, there's familiarity with the Fangio there for, for one year, I guess, I suppose. In my view, not a pure pass rusher. I know he had big time sack numbers at Oklahoma State coming into the league. I didn't think he was a big time pass rusher, even when I watched him in college, despite the fact that he had big time sack numbers. Um, he's not twitchy. He's not sudden. He's big. He's physical. Um, you know, I think he's one of those solid kind of rotational players. And again, you you won't have to spend a lot of money to get Agba. He's coming right. off an injury. He didn't play really he last cut. year. Okay. Yeah, he got cut. I mean, yeah, I, I don't think you're going to have to, you know, ha- how old is he now? What what year did he come out? Yeah, he's in his 30s. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. he's 30. He'll be 32, I think, at some point. Yeah, so I mean, no, again, another else. guy that I think if you bring in, you could probably get a one-year deal and he's a competition guy that hopes if – you hope if he makes your team, he can play 20, 25 snaps and be a solid rotational player. But he is not an edge pass rusher. One more guy for you. This guy I've always been intrigued with. He, he'd been a, a, a bench guy. Now he'd been a starter. He just won another Super Bowl. It's Mike Dana from the Chiefs. We don't talk a lot, a lot about him, but he's a free agent. Oh, oh, go ahead. What I love Mike. And and by the way, I, when I talked to Spags this past off season, um, before this year, you know, yeah. um, he was raving about him. He is a fascinating player. He can play inside, outside. He can rush the quarterback. He's good against the run. He's on a, on a Super Bowl team, okay, a team that's been in the Super Bowl and yeah. won them. He never gets talked about. And he's a really important piece of that defensive front. Um, and I, I think he's a really, really good player. He's not 30 yet, is he? It just he turns 27 in December, so he's yeah, a young guy. He's a young guy. Um, I, I, I love him. I love his tape. I love mm. the plays i you know to me that guy he plays with energy he can rush the quarterback he's low to the ground so he can bend i, I like michael dana a lot wow yeah super bowl champion now michael dana yeah, right? another one a couple yeah. times yeah. a couple of times yeah. yes a couple of times yeah um, there is there is one guy who caught my eye you know he was trying to be a super bowl champion his team came up short again uh defensive end from the Buffalo Bills, and I always wonder what this guy would look like uh, maybe in a Vic Fangio system. A.J. Epinesa, who I believe was a defensive tackle, right, at Iowa when he came out. Uh, both. He, uh, both. He was an inside-outside player, right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. He, um, what do you think of him? He's not a true pass rusher. I mean, can he rush on occasion? Yes. He's a power physical player. He's yeah. long. He's a you know, good athlete for his size. Not overly bendy. More of a, a speed-to-power guy. Um, solid player, so, like like a better version of Agba, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think you sign him to say he's now my edge rusher. Like right. he can be, he can play inside for sure. Like mm-hmm. I mean, in the old school Eagle defense, and again, we don't know what Vic Fangio is going to do. He would have been perfect in their five man front as kind of the four eye, you know, where they move sweat in a lot. Which I thought, hey, just my opinion. I didn't think that was the best use of sweat, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, right. But right. Um, but yeah, I think that's the kind of thing he'd be good at. Yes, he plays the edge, and he did play the edge for Buffalo. But I don't think you sign him and say now we have a pass rusher. Yeah, he his sack numbers. I was talking to someone in pro personnel where he don't want to say they were inflated, but that's not his game. He's a no. he's a power end and a forty three. Correct. Uh, he 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 was a terrific run stopper at uh, in college at Iowa. So yeah, yeah. I, 
Yeah, yeah. He's an he, old he's a guy. Like, I'm sorry, and if you go back years yeah. when people talked about like a strong side D end, you know, that played yeah. over the tight end. Power end. That's yeah. what he is. That's what he yeah. is. Got it. Excellent. You don't sign him thinking he's going to sack, get a lot of sacks. No, no, no. Adam's right. All right. Well, I think we've gone through the gamut of, uh, I mean, uh, literally, there are seven other guys who've been playing in the league for five or six years or, or longer that we could all talk about. But eventually, Greg, they all kind of fall into that that same role. This guy would be a good situational pass rusher. Um, but we got the ones with some familiarity with Vic, with uh, some young guys like Huff and Greenard who are on the come up. So it's a, you would have to, I think you would agree, this is a pretty good buyer's market if you're looking for just any kind of edge rusher. Yeah, the guy that, I mean, the two guys that that I probably like the most, if if you're talking about what I think would be reasonable money wise, and that mm-hmm. I think are really good players, would be Grenard and Danny. Yeah, because they're neither one's old, and I don't like to me. I I don't follow the markets the way you guys do. So t- sure. if you think I'm wrong, please tell me. I'm not saying I'm right, but I don't think either guy is going to be. You know, no one's getting T.J. Watt money here. You know. No. Yeah. yeah. So those two guys to me are. are a really nice players. Yeah. And I, I think I would throw Huff in there as maybe someone who gets yeah, some yeah. value oh, on the contract. I think, Huff, I think the league knows about Huff and I Got think it. he could get more, but I could be wrong. I mean, Grenard did have 12 and a half sacks. And when you watch the tape, because I probably watched every Texans game, maybe but one, you know, Grenard showed up. I mean, he, if you watch the tape, he showed up. Got it. Great stuff. All right. Next episode, we'll do our favorite position. You alluded to it earlier. We'll do linebackers. Free agent off linebackers. The ball. Oh boy. Off ball linebackers. Yes. Oh boy. Linebackers. Oh boy. And we will yeah. have no fewer than 612 names to throw at you, Greg, for that. Well, and <laughs> normally they don't get paid a ton of money. So we'll see. No. Some guys do. Obviously, we saw Tremaine Edmonds get a ton of money last year. We've yep. seen some guys, you know, the Roquan Smiths. But for the most part, unless you're viewed as special, those guys normally don't get a ton of money. But we'll see. You never know. We shall see. All right. That does it for episode two of season two of the Intel with Greg Cosell alongside Jeff Mosher. That's Adam Kaplan. And of course you've been, we've been joined by Greg Cosell. We'll catch you on the next one.